What's up guys? Welcome back to another Commander Deck Tech. This is an updated Commander Deck Tech of Edgar Markov. Now, I did the Edgar Markov deck something like two years ago. Um, I still have it. This is the updated version of it. This is the current build. It's had some changes over the last couple years, but this is kind of where I've settled down um, on the build. The mana base definitely needs upping that's probably the only other thing that's going to change if I do do another updated version that might be like a one minute short deck tech like hey we're just changing these lands in the deck but let's jump into Edgar for those of you that don't know what Edgar does when you know he has eminence whenever you cast another vampire spell if Edgar is in the command zone or on the battlefield create a 1-1 black vampire token he has first strike haste and whenever Edgar puts uh, whenever Edgar attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on each vampire you control. So he buffs all your vampires. So it's vampire tribal. Um, it's not your usual Markov. Usually Markov has a lot of the lower costing vampires. We put a few more of the higher costing vampires in my build of Edgar. But let's kick it off with the artifacts since um, Architect puts them first here. Got Ashdown's Altar because you want. Uh, it's got an aristocrats theme in it, so you want to be able to sack some of your creatures for things like your uh, Butcher of Malak here, your Dictate of Airbos, you know, stuff to make your creature, your opponent's creatures die. Um, Lightning Greaves, Mardu Banner, Orzhov Signet, Savai Crystal, Soul Ring, and Swift of Boots, because. Edgar is one of those commanders, it hits the board, people try to get rid of it. So you want to make sure you got both uh, Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots to try and keep them around on the board. Alright, kicking off your Vampires, we got Anowin, the Ruined Sage. Uh, bringing it upkeep, each player sacrifices a non-vampire creature. Another way to help get rid of your opponent's problem creatures. Got Bartholomew, the Presido. Sacrifice another creature and artifact, put a plus one plus one counter on him. Another great part, you can make a combo with him and your Dictate or your Butcher of Malak here and your 1-1 tokens from Edgar or some of your vampires that don't care if they die. Um, gives you a sack outlet, gives you a way to get some of your tokens off the board to get your opponent's bigger creatures off the board if you have stuff like uh, Dictate or your Butcher. Uh, next we got Bishop of Rebirth. When it attacks, return target creature card from with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. A handful of your sack outlets and stuff are three or less. Um, or some are in your important pieces. Like Blood Artist. Um, next card is Bishop of the Bloodstained. When Bishop of the Bloodstained enters the battlefield, each opponent loses one life for each vampire you control. This one is important. It works great with your um, Sanguine Bond and Exquisite Blood. So it starts that combo going. There's a couple of different ways to get that combo going, but that is one of them. Uh, what's next? Blood Artist. Whenever a Blood Artist and a creature dies, target player loses one life, you gain one life. Another way to get that Exquisite Blood and Sanguine Bond going. Uh, see here bloodline necromancer when bloodline necromancer enters the battlefield you may return a vampire or a wizard creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield uh, recurrence obviously bloodthirsty aerialist whenever you gain life put a plus one plus one counter on it butcher malik here whenever butcher malik here or another creature you control dies uh, you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield each opponent sacrifices a creature uh, captivating vampire other vampires you control get plus one plus one. Tap five untapped vampires you control gain control target creature. It becomes a vampire in addition to its other types. So kind of a way to deal with some problem things on your opponent's board. You tap five of your vampires and you just take control of it. If you don't have a sack thing like Butcher Malakir or Dictate on the board. Where you just got to get one of your creatures to die so they have to sacrifice it. Um. Champion of Dusk. When it enters the battlefield, you draw X cards and 
Lose X life, where X is the number of vampires you control. Great card to draw some cards. We got first of the blessed. Whenever you attack, target attack a vampire that isn't a demon becomes a demon in addition to certain types. And it gains when this creature dies, draw a card and create a 4-3 four, 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 white black vampire demon creature token with flying. So this turns your non-token... Uh, turns all your vampires into bigger tokens when they die, some of them. Um, it's great for this deck. Cliffhaven Vampire, whenever you gain life, each opponent loses life. Another way to get that sanguine bond and exquisite blood going. Um, it is one half of it. You gain life, each opponent loses life. So this with exquisite blood gets that infinite combo going. All right, what's after that? Cordial Vampire. When Cordial Vampire, another creature dies, put a plus one plus one counter. It's an aristocrat style Edgar deck. Things are going to die. So this can get very, very out of hand very quickly, especially if you have like Ashland's Altar on the board and a couple of vampires you don't care about, like the tokens, and like Dictate or Butcher, you just start sacking the tokens. All of a sudden, all your vampires are freaking huge. Um, Cruel Celebrant, whenever Cruel Celebrant or another creature you control dies, lose one life, you gain a life. Another way to get them... Uh, same combo, the Sanguine Bond and the Exquisite Blood combo going. Uh, got Dark Imposter, Defiant Blood Lord. Defiant Blood Lord, another way to get them freaking combos going with the Exquisite Blood and Dictator Railroads. If you can tell, we really like that combo in this deck. Um, Dominating Vampire, Toronto's Emissary, another way to get that combo started. <laughs> Edgar, Charmed Groom. This card's really cool because it just comes back. When Edgar Charm Groom dies, return to the battlefield transformed under its owner's control. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one white black vampire creature token with lifelink. Put a blood line counter on Edgar's coffin. And if there are three or more, remove those counters and transform it. So then it goes back to him. So it's kind of just self-built recurrence as long as they don't remove the the artifact from the board. Falcon Wrath Aristocrat. Four and Forerunner of the Legion. Legion Lieutenant. Malakir Blood Witch. Maven Fane Dusk Apostle. Olivia the Crimson Black Bride. Can't have the groom without the bride. Pawn of Lumog. Preacher of the Schism. Sanctum Seeker. Sangir the Dark Baron. This card is great in this deck. Species Specialist, a little bit more draw. Uh, Thirsting Blood Lord, another Lord type effect. Vampire Nighthawk, Vermin Grenland, Fish Call, Blood Arbiter. I kind of want to build that as a deck. Uh, Vito Thorn of the Dusk Rose, another way to get that combo going with the Exquisite Blood and the Sanguine Bond. And Yaheni, probably my personal favorite vampire in the whole deck. Now, up to the enchantments. We got Anointed Procession. If a creature, or if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates that twice that many. So with Edgar's effect, that's great. Uh, Blind Obedience, Dictate of Erebos, Exquisite, bond, Exquisite Blood, Sanguine Bond, and the Stenzia Masquerade. This card is underrated in this deck. Under, attacking creatures you control have First Strike, and whenever an up. Vampire you control deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one plus one counter on. So not only does it keep your vampires safe from like death touch, um, it gets them buff if they get through. So that's always a plus. Uh, the instance of the deck, Crackling Doom, Mortify, Path to Exile, Source to Plowshares, and Terminate. Whole bunch of removal stuff. Um, cause you really, really want to be swinging in and just killing your opponents as best you can. So, what way to do that? Any problem ones that you can't hit with one of the combos in the creatures, you just remove it with one of these. Four Planeswalkers in deck, we got Soren Markov, uh, Soren the Mythless, Mirthless, uh, Soren Impervious Bloodlord, 
and Soren Vengeful Bloodguard. So all Sorens, um, all Soren Planeswalkers. There is a couple of other Soren Planeswalkers, we just don't have them. I don't think um, for this specific build that they might work too well, but for what it is, this is the way we're playing it. Then for the sorceries, we got Diabolic Tutor, uh, Dreadbore, Feast of Blood, Merciless Eviction, Patriarch's Bidding, and Ruinous Ultimatum. So guys, I'm not going to go over the lands in the deck. It would just take far too long. But leave a comment down below what you guys think about this deck. Um, shout out to Archidex. Not a sponsor, but these are where we've been doing the deck list from now. Um, let me know what you guys think about this deck. Suggestions you might have for it. Um, I know it could use more tutors. I just don't have more tutors right now to put in it um, or the money to get tutors. So that that's one thing I know that it could use is more tutors. Leave a comment down below what you guys think it could use. If you want to test the deck out, link is in the description box like always for you guys to check it out. And it'll bring you here to Architect. You'll see the whole deck kind of like this. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Leave a comment, any commanders you might want to see down below. Chances are we might get to them.